<laughs> he said, it's my fault now that he's here. Praise God. About three weeks ago, Barry was speaking, and he mentioned my name. And the second Sunday, he then said everybody had a story to tell. And he looked exactly toward me, and he knew I had a story to tell. And I'm going to start back a little ways when I first, and the Lord introduced me to him. My mother died in 1980 with breast cancer. She was bedridden. She called all the young men's children in the room and had a talk with them one at a time. I was the very last one she talked with. So she knew I was very close to her. And that day she told me that not to get mad at the Lord, it was the Lord's doing and she wanted to go home if the Lord was willing to take her. She had suffered enough. For me never get mad at the Lord. I told her I wouldn't. But a lot of people started coming in and I didn't want to be around them so I went to my bedroom. I sat down on my bed and I prayed to the Lord. And no more else was in there. And I asked the Lord, was my mother in heaven? A few minutes later, he put his hand on my left shoulder, patted me twice. I knew then that the Lord had took my mother to heaven. When she died, she raised her hand up. And she had a big old smile come on her face. She said, Grandma, my great-grandmother grabbed her by the hand and took her to heaven. And uh, so I stayed in there. My dad come in there about an hour later to check on me. He said, Joe, are you all right? I said, yes, I just need to be alone. And uh, I said, but I'm going to tell you something. Mother is in heaven. And I noticed a smile come on his face, and uh, <sighs> tears started drying up off of his face a little bit. So that's when the Lord affected me when he touched me on the shoulder. And Bob Norris, me and him were very close in here. We talked about goldfish and all I had. And he knew something had happened to me on the day I went out in church. I come in church like I usually do now. I sat down and I grabbed the seat in front of me and I couldn't let go of that seat, whatever. But Vicki said, I think she said, put my head on her shoulder, let go of the bench. I couldn't do it. All of a sudden, the Lord took my hands off that beach, and I was gone. I went to the light. It was going counterclockwise. The clouds up there are so beautiful. And there's nothing like the clouds here. And the sky is so blue up there. The sky out here is nothing like blue up there. I was walking on the clouds like a sidewalk of clouds. A little light about four foot wide. I was walking in clouds. They had a bright light behind up in front of me shining. It's the prettiest light you ever seen. And I was walking toward that light. That was the light to heaven, I believe. But far off and a long distance Someone called me. He said, you can't leave me. You can't die. you got to come back, Joe. And the snap of finger, I came back. But before all that happened, the Lord had told me to make a cane, a walking cane, that I would need a walking cane. 
make it out of the bed. Me and Vicky got a place on Lake Session. I was walking around the building. There was this pretty little suit tree there. The Lord said I was going to make a walking cane out of that little cedar tree. I said, I cannot make that walking cane out of a cedar tree and not kill it. The Lord said, no, you're going to wait till that tree dies, then you're going to make that walking cane. That summer, that tree stayed green. That winter, that tree still stayed green. That spring, that tree, cedar tree, it died and turned brown and all the needles fell off. But it took me a, a month, probably, to make that walking cane. I asked Vicky to help me make it. You know, I didn't know how to make a walking cane, never had done nothing like that. But between me and her, she helped me with this walking cane. But I didn't know who I was supposed to give that walking cane to. And I, what I was supposed to do with that walking cane. When they went out in church, and then they carried me out. I don't know what happened in church. I asked Vicki, did the preacher do his sermon? She said, no. I said, I'm sorry. And the next day, I was when the preacher, I got around, I asked him. I told him I was sorry I missed his service up. He said, never mind about the service, as long as you were all right. I don't know what happened in this church. All I know when I come to, I think I was in the ambulance. I don't, I'm not sure. But I kind of got bad at Vicky because I was going to heaven and she called me back. <laughs> I don't know why she won't call me back, but I was going. But I guess he had his way about sending me back and about making this walking cane because he knew my heart had gone out. Bob Norris knew my heart was bad. He said, that's what will happen to me. They done all kinds of tests on me and they finally said, yes, I had a heart attack before and I had a tube blockage behind my heart. I had a double bypass. He knew I needed that cane to walk. And that's why I had to make that cane to walk. And he knew I had a granddaughter on the way. And he knew I needed to see that granddaughter. And Kinsley is that granddaughter. I love her to death. And I believe in the Lord. And he done all this for me. He has talked to me. When pray me with my name, the Lord told me I had to tell my story. So that's when I pray. Seven here has to put up with me right now. <laughs> well, he told, asked me, told me my name, and the Lord had pushed me to tell the story. So I'm scared, I'm nervous, but I know the Lord's up here with me because if it wasn't, I wouldn't be standing up here today. And I believe in the Lord, and I get to so say it. That's my story, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> and till this day, I still believe in the Lord. He still talks to me. When John Upton came up here to the front and asked, could they be in, they wanted volunteers to walk the parking lot? The Lord talked to me in here that day. He said, Joe, you ain't able. You ain't in good help. But he said, you didn't have to carry a silk weapon, you carry a cell phone, but he didn't say nothing about a walking cane. <laughs> so I use that walking cane on here and make them come in here and testify for y'all. Why are they doing the devil's work out there when they should be in here listening to the Lord? <laughs> so that's my story. And I thank y'all for listening to me. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 